This is an HP 5400A. This was given to me by a friend of mine. It's got a few little problems with it. Um, appears to be working most of the functions here. But what seems to be a problem is you now on the measure functions here, I can change the measure functions. The problem is the soft keys aren't working. So this strip here with these switches, none of these seem to work. So I'm going to open the unit up and try to find out why we're not getting any conduction through the soft keys. Other than that, the unit seems to be working good. I'm running in my um, GPS frequency standard here. So the next step will be to uh, open up the unit and try to find out where the problem is with these. Once you remove some uh, connections in the back, unscrew them, you can remove this back plastic panel. It's all one piece. So you want to remove that and get it out of the way. And then on the back here, and you should download the service manual because it tells you how to remove this. This is held in place with just some plastic clasps here that connect. But there's two, one here and one here, that you push to remove the bottom. The bottom rotates out and then you can remove the top. That way you can get the, the front panel out here. The only thing you have to remove is this brightness control. It's a long shaft that mates inside the main frame, comes out of the front. The front's got a plastic flat on here that allows you to put it through the hole. Anyway, remove this control and then you can take the front panel off. The back end of this ribbon cable plugs in to the back of the motherboard here. that will give you access to the front panel. And the soft switches are mounted here on this circuit board. It looks like this is, is this soldered in? Yeah, it looks like it's soldered in. More flat flex cable, so be really careful with that. Looks like this is just put in with some clips that hold it in. So, yeah, this looks really delicate here. Looks like this has been out before. This might have been pried on, I'm not sure. But there's the rubber men bearing in the front and then the circuit boards in the back against it. So that when you push down it's got those carbon pads on it that make contact. So I'm going to remove this board and the rubber insert and see if cleaning that will help. I'll do that next. After we remove the circuit board here with the contacts on it, these may be gold plated, you can remove the rubber membrane here for the membrane switches that comes out. Kind of crusty, I'll clean that off. Here you can see the contacts for the soft switches. And this uh, flat flex cable here is very delicate. Not sure if this unplugs or not here. I'm not gonna I'm just gonna leave it connected. On here you can see the carbon pads that make contact with these contacts here. I'm gonna try cleaning these contacts and maybe cleaning these contacts with some isopropyl and see if it restores operation. If not, I may try to get some of those repair kits for remote controls for TVs. It's like a liquid carbon and you can resurface these to make contact. But none of these switches work so I, it's hard to believe that all of them were, were intermittent so there may be another problem somewhere. But I'm going to try that, put it back and we'll see what happens. For the contacts on the printed circuit board, what I'll try first is 
cotton swab, a little deoxit D5, and then I will clean each of these off. But I'll use two hands since my lovely assistant's upstairs. So I'll do that next. Clean those off with deoxit. The other side of the Q-tip, I'll clean these off with isopropyl. Then we'll put it back together and see what happens. Cross your fingers. Well, I reinstalled circuit board with the switches on it after cleaning them, and seems to work. Not as good as I'd like. Yeah, I got to push kind of hard on here to get it to work. I think what I'm going to have to do, but at least it's working, if maybe temporary. It's it's working, but not really as good as it should. I'm going to put it back together. I think I'm going to order some of that uh, carbon, uh, liquid carbon, and try that on the on the pads there. I know the remotes for televisions um, sometimes go bad, and that works. But I'm going to put it back together and see. We'll give it a test run and see how it works once we get it back together. Well, it appears to be working, at least uh, a little better than it was. Let's try auto scale. I'm looking at my GPS frequency standard. So, let's see here. Yeah, these are a little bit, you got to push pretty hard. I need to... Uh, what do you call resurface these connections here? That's a nice little scope. By today's standards, I know it's not really um, it's not really up to snuff with some of the newer scopes. These buttons operate normally here. There's our cursors. Yeah, 10, 10 megahertz, it's pretty close, 10.01, 9 point whatever. So the math is working. Period, 90, 100 nanoseconds. Well, I'm going to put it back together. Pretty clean inside. Well, it looks like it's healthy. Normal sinus rhythm. <laughs> Actually, this is one of these uh, cheap Chinese function generators here that generates a lot of different things. Here's a electrocardiogram here, so we can put it through its paces here. There's all sorts of different waveforms. These are kind of neat. I don't know what this one is. Wow, that one's varying in frequency, it looks like. Phase. Well, that looks like a... Oh, that's a sine wave. Square wave. Triangle wave. I don't know what that is. Huh. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Looks like a DC level. It's a different one. One thing I like about these scopes is the auto scale, like on the newer ones. But that can kind of make you um, lazy. It's in the ballpark, though. I kind of like this scope. 100 megahertz, two channel. 
It's it's the HP 54600A 100 megahertz two channel scope. So let's look at the display. There we go. Yeah, I had to really push that. That's not used average. See what it says for frequency for this. Frequency not found. Yeah, I think it's confused. Let's change the waveform. Measurement already selected. All right. Still not measuring the frequency. Let's see if we get a sine wave. I think that's the sine wave. Oh yeah, 10 kilohertz. And 10 kilohertz, 10 volt sine wave. Not much in this little waveform generator, but uh, it was really cheap and it's kind of handy. It's real light, so uh, it's kind of a handy little source. It's got two channels on it, too. Anyway, I think that's it for this one. This is a short one, so I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.